The Steve Jobs Theater is the result of an eight-year collaboration between Apple and the architecture firm Foster & Partners. It debuted in 2017 when the iPhone X was introduced, and it's located at the company's main headquarters called Apple Park. I previously made a video about the entire campus itself that I'll link to in the comments, but this video is focused only on the Steve Jobs Theater. And don't forget to subscribe for these voting polls to help decide which topics I cover. All right, now the theater was placed at the top of a small hill, which happens to be the highest point in Apple Park, as a sign of respect to the man it's named after. When approaching the building, the first thing you'll notice is the circular 155-foot metallic carbon fiber roof. It appears to be suspended in midair since it's supported by nothing but glass, 44 panels of 22-foot tall glass to be exact. There are no columns or beams in sight, which is possible thanks to an incredible feat of engineering. And although this design may appear to be structurally questionable, rest assured that it's actually one of the most resilient buildings in America today. Its foundation includes pendulum isolators, which are essentially giant ball bearings that allow earthquakes to shake the ground underneath the structure while the building itself doesn't move at all. That means the Steve Jobs Theater is capable of withstanding earthquakes with a magnitude of 8 plus. Apple even assured visitors about the building's safety by claiming that if every other glass panel were to break or fall away, the 80-ton roof would still be supported by the remaining panels, a testament to how seriously Foster and Partners thought about safety and security. But that's only the beginning of the building's innovative features. The theater's architects said they tried to design the building with the same philosophy Apple uses to design products, which means everything included must have a purpose while also maintaining an outward appearance of effortless simplicity. For example, the lobby appears to have glass walls, a circular roof with lights, and that's pretty much it. But hidden inside the glass panel's thin silicon joints are custom-designed water pipes that connect to a sprinkler system embedded inside the roof. They use this technique to run wiring for power, data, and audio through the building. So while you might look up and assume the dark circular bars are an aesthetic design choice, they actually serve a functional purpose, like housing the sprinklers, speakers, and an antenna for Apple's internal communication system, which is not unlike the black bar we saw on the original iPhone that allowed for radio signals to pass through. Now, while Foster and Partners were striving to create the most minimal space possible, they ran into a problem, echo. Since there were no columns or beams, sound bounced off the flat surfaces of the floor, ceiling, and walls, creating an unpleasantly loud echo. So how was this solved without altering the building's design? Well, they realized that humans themselves acted as natural sound absorbers. So during Apple events, when the lobby is packed with guests, virtually no echo can be heard. Although for more intimate events with only a handful of people, Apple will put up some material on the walls designed to absorb sound and prevent echo. But this section of the theater is only the lobby, and the only structure above ground. Everything else is one level below. Just like the Apple Store on 5th Avenue, visitors will have to either take the stairs or the glass elevator to reach the lower level. But in this case, the elevator and stairs each have a unique design. For example, the glass elevator is actually on a corkscrew track that allows it to slowly rotate while descending. That way, the elevator only needs one door for passengers to enter and exit, rather than two. The staircase is made from the same Italian limestone that covers the walls, and the two were designed to be seamlessly integrated, from the gentle curve of the staircase while hugging the perimeter to the recessed handrail that's directly formed into the limestone wall. Both methods of reaching the lower level have been crafted with attention to every last detail. And one of my favorite details of this building is the foyer, which is used as a hands-on demo area of new products Apple introduces during an event. The catch is that the area is closed off by a huge curved metal wall while visitors enter the auditorium, and only opens up after visitors leave the event. It's an impressive touch that makes the experience of attending an Apple event even more magical. But what about the auditorium itself? Well, it's accessible through a wide entryway off the foyer, with the words Steve Jobs Theater carved above it. This is actually the only place in the building where you can find Jobs' name. 
Once inside, the space might feel like a small and intimate theater, but it's actually almost three times larger than Apple's previous town hall with 921 seats. But not just any chairs would do. Jonathan Ive deliberately chose wide, plush seating made from tan Italian leather. The premium materials meant each seat cost Apple a reported $14,000. The floors are made from a white oak that's also carried through to the fixtures along the walls. So when it comes to the Steve Jobs Theater, it's clear that no expense was spared. And although critics have questioned the need for $14,000 leather chairs and a rotating glass elevator, I think Steve Jobs would have loved every detail that added to the building's magical experience, since, after all, that's exactly what he strived for when creating products. Alright guys, thanks for watching till the end, don't forget to subscribe to help decide which topics I cover, and I'll see you in the next video.